Dr. Birol, are you personally worried? I'm personally worried because of the general picture. There are different levels of my worry. The first one is that I see that in the next years to come, oil and geopolitics will be more and more interwoven. You mean war? It can be different types of that, and I do not like it. I would like to see oil industry remain as a business, as a part of the economic sector, but I am afraid that there will be more and more intersection between oil and geopolitics. This is the first worry. The second worry is the a sudden increase in the oil prices. This is not a good news for anybody. I myself, I never bought a car, and I will never buy a car, but it is for different reasons, because I thought if we want to give a recommendations of a sustainable way of life to the people, we should first do ourselves what is, we believe is the truth. I will not be affected from that very directly, but there are the other ways which will affect my life, a personal life, through perhaps some implications on the economic growth, the way of life and others. Yes, I am personally worried about those developments. Now, the remarkable thing about that interview is that senior officials never normally talk like that. Fatih Birol is the chief economist of the International Energy Agency in Paris. Finally, Dr. Jeremy Leggett, author of Half Gone About Peak Oil, on their latest risk report done by UK Industries. Three years ago, a few companies got together in a sort of ad hoc way because we had concerns about the high oil price. Uh, and we decided to do a sort of business risk assessment of the peak oil issue. And going into that exercise, the companies that were spread you know, pretty much across British industry were not all of the view that there was definitely a problem, but the thinking was this is a very high consequence issue and is it a high probability issue as well? I thought it was, and one or two of the others did as well. But by the end of the exercise, a year of looking at the uh, risk assessment, we were all of the view that this is a very high consequence and very high risk issue and that we need to respond to it proactively, governments, companies, communities. And that was our message in our first report in 2008, reiterated in our second report in 2010. And we think that this problem is actually as bad, if not worse, than the credit crunch. We say this in the foreword to the chief executives and the chairman of the companies to our second report because it's going to come down on a world economy that is oil-dependent, nay, oil-addicted, uh, as a great surprise when oil supply begins to descend, maybe even collapse. And, you know, this is a, a huge whistle that we're trying to blow. And it's not just the usual suspects in this group, is it? What sort of members have you got? No, this is a pan-industry task force. It's chaired by Virgin. The coordination is done by Arup, the big engineering company. Scottish and Southern, one of our big six energy companies, are on it. Kingfisher, massive retailer. Stagecoach, transport company, one or two others. My own company, Solar Century. So, you know, we spread across British industry. And the thing about this is that whereas in the run-up to the credit crunch, the whistles were being blown... But, you know, by a handful of maverick economists and one or two far-sighted journalists like Gillian Tett at the Financial Times, this time you've got a cadre of people in and around the oil industry itself, generally individuals, but also a number of companies who've looked in depth at the problem. And we're saying, you know, Houston, this is a problem. We need to be doing something about this. We need to be acting ahead of the crunch to buy ourselves time and soften the landing. And, you know, I, I have to say we're, we're not having very much success with getting anyone's attention. Why not? Well, it's a risk assessment exercise. So there is a preponderant view that there isn't a problem here. If you talk to BP and many of the other oil companies, that's the view that you'll get. And the government's been told this. But also, I think very definitely there's a sort of desperation to believe the comforting narrative if your choice is the uncomfortable narrative and the comforting one. And I mean, I, I personally find that everywhere in government, in industry, you know, people do not want to believe that there is a problem with the lifeblood of, of modern economies. They just don't. It can't be true. It can't be true, exactly so. That syndrome. So what is the oil crunch? The oil crunch is when global supply fails to meet demand and starts to drop, and arguably we fear starts to drop so fast that you'd almost call it a collapse. 
And what our economies are locked into is the inherent assumption that actually demand keeps growing, as it does, fed primarily these days by India, China and the Middle East, and it'll just go right on growing, and somehow we'll be able to keep the supply track growing with demand. And this is what we're saying. We're saying that that narrative is no longer believable. There are so many problems with conventional oil and unconventional oil that on the massive balance of probabilities, by 2015 at the latest, in the view of the industry task force, there'll be a descent of global oil production. And that will cause a crunch. It'll cause the price to go through the roof. It'll cause price volatility and all the downsides that come with a fabulously expensive and, in some cases, simply unavailable oil. Dr Jeremy Leggett, who once worked in the oil industry as a geologist, now he's head of Solar Century in Britain. And that report on peak oil by Jonica Newby, whose full catalyst story is on next Thursday, ABC One, at 8pm. And next week on The Science Show, population, the figures, the problem. I'll talk to Nobel laureate Sir John Sulston. And on SBS television on Tuesday, the story of science continues. The Science Show is produced by David Fisher and Charlie McCune and music by John Little. I'm Robin Williams.